Morning guys, first of all, thank you to all who's watched, liked and subscribed. While that's away, it leaves us a bit of spare time to get on with something else we've got in the pipeline. And there it is. I mean, we've had this for some time now. I have been struggling with time, so I've not really done much progress on it. For them that don't know what this is, this is a Arctic Cat Wildcat 1000cc buggy. I actually bought this some time ago with suspected engine failure. It is a 1000cc automatic, or was, should I say, that don't quite cut it. The plans was never to rebuild the engine really. As good as they are in standard form, it don't quite cut it. So we're gonna do a little bit with it. When I say a little bit, a little bit, a lot. Um, like stand, standard form, it's 120 horsepower, I believe. I'd say uh, rev and go automatic plan for it is a nice round number 500 horse i've got a picture in my head how i want it i mean we have done a little bit of work on it i have pulled the engine and gearbox out uh, that's gone it bin really that weren't quite cutting it so this is where we're at power wise or engine transplant wise it's not that one that one wants going it bin and all that's bars fail up another one dead but what we have got is another K20 wheel blower. It's not a stock motor. It is a K20 A2. It is built. It has got uh, forged rods and pistons, ALP bolts. It's having another pulsar on it. I do try to use pulsars on all my builds just because the results you get from them, they tend to none. So yeah, plans are K20, uh, six speed manual, pulsar 3076 turbo, Pretty much similar sort of engine spec to what I'm running in the Peugeot. Plan of action is obviously the K20 onto a transaxle gearbox from a Porsche. Porsche being engine and gearbox behind the seats in the Porsche setup, it's rear wheel drive. So yeah, I have got I have got the box. A good friend of mine's currently doing the adapter plate. Um, same guy who did the one for the Lamborghini. Turbo 3076 Pulsar. Management wise, Hon Data, as I've said, pretty much similar sort of spec to what we've got in the Peugeot. So yeah, engine, engine sat long ways uh, onto the transaxle box. We're gonna build a custom sidewinder manifold, try and get turbo on show. Intercooler wise, we might build a cooler in back at cage. Visually, we're not quite sure which way to go yet. It's in stock form at the minute. Do I run it as just a road road buggy, i.e. lower it and wide wheels and get it on the floor as like a circuit road thing? Or do I leave it in stock form? Or do we go to like an all-terrain tyre so we've got best of both worlds? We, we, we haven't decided that yet, but that's to come. Let us know what you think in the comments. Um, stock form fully off-road big all-terrain tires or wide low road i mean i'm not the first person to mess with one of these i have seen over the pond a lot of people are big turbo kits stroker motors they are chasing big numbers 300s 400 horsepower some people are putting big motors in but they're taking it away from it being a buggy it's more of a full space frame kind of car they're altering the chassis wider uh, longer. I am going to keep it in standard form as far as a Wildcat goes just with 500 horsepower. If the buggy is something you are interested in please like and subscribe. There's a lot of a lot of time got to go into this buggy so there will be a lot of build episodes in depth episodes of this. There's a lot of fabrication work involved being engine, box mounts, manifold, downpipe, boost pipes, somewhat of somewhere intercooler wise, gear shifter with it being auto, clutch pedals, I mean we haven't got one of them, wiring looms, I'm going to have to make a full custom loom, uh, I am going to document this build as much as I can, I mean all of it should I say. We're not there, but we will get there in the end. Well, that's the Skyline dropped off at Body Shop and I've just picked the transporter up and he hasn't done a bad job of that, has he? Doesn't look a bad thing there. A little bit about this van. 
I mean, I've had loads of these, well, I say loads, I've had an handful of these vans. I've always stayed away from the new ones just because they are garbage, they are unreliable, they're just no good. Um, but I bought this one as a non-runner, again, engine failure, and I thought it didn't have any one of them back in it. So now it is, what I think is a damn sight better than what it was. It's probably one of the most reliablest Euro 6 vans out there. If you do want to see exactly what it is or exactly what it's got or not got, check next video. I will do a full walk around or a little bit about it, about when I bought it, why it failed, um, reasons why they do fail, and reasons why I put that engine in there that's there. The next day. Today, um, we've got a little bit of spare time in the workshop. So we're just going to prep this sump. This is a K2082 sump off for an EP3 Civic. What we're going to be using on the buggy. Um, it's not the one off the engine. The engine is a fresh built engine. This is just a sump part out the back room. We've got plenty of K20 bits in there. I'm going to prep this sump. I'm going to drill it while the AM10 oil return, feed, uh, oil return fitting in there. There's two ways I could do this. I could drill it and tap it and thread that in um, a good place on a standard A2 K20 sum is just above the drain bung just because it's thick material so you will you will be able to tap that it's a damn sight thicker than anywhere else in this sum uh, with this one I'm not going to drill and tap it I am going to drill it and then TIG weld it in just for the simple fact of it's one less fitting to come loose and potentially start leaking. So yeah, that's uh, that's my next my next job. So I'm going to drill that, fit that, tick it up, and then send this sump to be vapor blasted. And then it's a case of fitting the baffle kit in there and fitting it back to the engine. That blunt thing is used it <laughs> drop concrete way. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. It's going. No? Yeah, it's going, but it'd be a lot better if it was if it weren't chewing it for I'm gonna sharpen that drill bit. Sharpen drill bits. It looks like he's used that to drill concrete way. I didn't know you could sharpen drill bits, to be honest. Yeah, okay. <laughs> See, they want to call it falls away and all look, can't you? Oh, he loves um, racking up an old mess, doesn't he? Oh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get that for you, mate. Oh, good ass, isn't it? Yeah, what? <laughs> you didn't even talk loud, did you? No. Stick her off the top of the head. Oh. <laughs> The one boss, not the one boss.
Why have I just done that? That's exactly what I was just about to ask. Yeah. Why have you done that? Ground or anodizing off, so when you weld it, it don't yeah. contaminate with anodizing. Ah, oh, okay. We learn something new every day, don't we? <laughs> So that there, we're going to weld it in there like that. Well, look. I reckon. Oh, Pro yes. Proper jobby. Proper fitment. So what we're doing now is a bit of sandblasting on the K20 sump. Get it all looking fresh and uh, clean it all out. Oh yeah, it's going to be dangerous. It really is. I can imagine it now. That looks like it's going to be seized on there, doesn't it? Yeah, that's it? Yeah. Boom, boom! 